We have Sandra Miller with us this evening at the Indian Photography Festival Hyderabad 2018. Uh, Sandra doesn't need an introduction, is one of the world's leading fashion photographers, a brand photographer, and has traveled extensively across the world shooting people, brands, and other things. Sandro is also a guilty fighter. He's had cancer before. He's been, he's been a survivor. And that also makes part of his personality and persona. Welcome to Hyderabad. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Sandro, to begin with, uh, how do you interpret an image? How do you interpret what happens to an image of a person or a brand or of a situation? Well, I, I think, you know, a photograph, because it's a still image, it gives you time to actually examine the image and to dissect the image. It's something that you take a look at the composition, you take a look at the light, you take a look at the expression, the emotion. There's so much, there's a story in every still image. And if one takes the time to really study photography and study an image, it will give to you over and over and over again. So for me, it's, you know, I, I have found that photography for me has been almost the biggest educator that I have had. You know, I've gone to uh, all of my schooling, uh, I've gone to the university, but I believe that photography teaches me more than what I learned in school because. Through photography, I've learned what war looks like. I've learned what a tsunami looks like, what famine looks like, what the AIDS epidemic looks like. It's photography that has taught me so much about life, about people, about cultures. In the same context, could you tell us something about your Cuban project, mm -hmm. where you invited to Cuba, and you shot extensively across the country, and that probably in some senses led to an easing of uh, uh, the rather hostile relationship between the two countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, well, that's, a, that's very interesting. You know, I went to Cuba in 1999. I was there working on a project shooting boxers. I was working on a book. And if you're going to shoot boxing, you have to go to Cuba because Cuba produces probably in the world the best boxers in the world. And my first time there, I was a bit in shock of how the government was handling its people. You know, I didn't understand this whole rations of food, you know, uh, that you are actually take one day off a week and not eat anything. I was almost in shock about the way that the country was running its, its, uh, its, its people. But through this project, this boxing project, the government saw my work and they asked me to come back and photograph all of the Olympic stars, all the cha world champions, all the, the gold medal winners that they've had, which in Cuba at that time there was over 80 world champions and gold medal winners. They invited me back to come back uh, a year later. I went uh, and spent over a month in Havana. Uh, and it was at this time, while I was photographing these great, great athletes, that I began to walk the streets of Cuba and begin to meet the people and live the life as a Cuban. I would walk 14 hours a day looking for those beautiful little gem of photographs. And it was through this year that I noticed that it didn't matter how poor the people were, they were gonna give you what they had. And they were happy. There was something that was really strange to me. that These people had very, very little, but they were smiling. They were happy. They were dancing. They listened to a little bit of music. You know, they had their wife, their lover, and they seemed like everything was okay. And then I come from a country that has abundance, abundance of everything. And I see people walking the streets sad, and, 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 and many times ready to end their life. And I, th I started thinking about this, what's going on here? Why can a country have so little, but yet be so happy? So it was over the next 15 years, I'd go every single year to Cuba to go back onto the streets to find those beautiful little gems that I could find so I could make my book, Imagine Cuba. Where do you draw the line of perfection? You say 
this is it. I have got what I want, mm. or my client has got what he wants. Yeah. Well, there's two, for me, there's two different styles of uh, working. You know, one working that I get paid for, and one working for my own soul. And I demand perfection in both. You know, I want to make sure that my client walks out extremely happy and satisfied because really our industry is very small. The world has become very small. And if I do not achieve perfection for one campaign, it goes through the industry. You know, and for me, I feel if somebody's going to hire me and pay me good money to shoot for their brand, that is my duty, my responsibility to deliver an image that is absolutely superb, that does its job. But it's more difficult when I'm shooting for just myself because I'm harder on myself than what the client is on me. I'm very demanding of myself to achieve perfection. And, you know, I know what I want. And when I see it, I won't stop until I got it. Yesterday we were here in India and I had a group of young men who wanted to work with me. And we put together a little team and we went out and I did nine portraits yesterday and you know there's nobody guiding me to tell me how these shots have to look but it's my mind that tells me how I want them to be and they have to be perfect because they're gonna you know this is my name going on this is my signature this is my reputation and for me I have no room for meteorocracy I've been too close to death to, to, to do mediocre work. You know, mediocrity, 95% of the people do mediocre work, mediocre work, 95%. It's 5% of the people that push themselves to get to that upper echelon of 5%. And that's what I have to do. I have to push myself to become, to stay there on top. And I need perfection. As a creative director, you interpret a subject. Mm -hmm. uh, that's your duty as to interpret it and probably show uh, the brand or people or whatever it is in, in better light. Mm -hmm. What is the precise process of uh, creative interpretation? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, usually when I'm shooting for a brand, first I'm going to get a layout or I'm going to get a storyboard. If it's, if it's, a, if it's a TV commercial, I'm going to get a storyboard. And again, usually the creative director and the writer have worked for over a year to get this ad campaign approved. It's, so it's, it's when they give it to me, there's leeway on each side for me to do some interpretation of, of, the, of, of the shot, but I must first nail their concept. And then once everybody feels comfortable, then we could drift off a little bit and begin to experiment and say, why don't we try something like this here? And so often they'll end up using my interpretation. But I can't, I can't go there. I can't go into my interpretation until I've achieved what they have asked me to do because of the fact that there's been focus groups. There is 50 people who have approved this layout. So I can't just take over and go, oh, this isn't right. This is awful. Hey, listen to me. I'll show you how to do this. I'd never work for them again. You know, I have to deliver the concept first, and I have to have them be very happy, and then we can play. When I've got the concept and everybody's approved and they're happy, then we we can play a little bit more. Uh, we cannot end this conversation with referring to your gorgeous wife. Mm. Probably is an important part of your uh, creative process. Absolutely. Yeah, well, my wife is my best friend. Um, she makes me push hard to make sure that I'm always doing the right thing, the right project. Um, she keeps me grounded and keeps me also, you know, uh, very human. You know, we know that we are very blessed. We don't uh, take for granted anything that we have in life. And, you know, photography has been very good to the both of us. And uh, she also herself is a photographer. And so we share so much in common that our lives are very easy to live together.
She's a little bit of a problem sometimes. <laughs> no, she's wonderful. Thank you very You're much. You're so welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a, it was a pleasure and an honor. Thank yeah. you.